Yeah, that's right. This will be day five. They plan to come out here in protest of who knows how many. The organizers say they plan to be here every evening in support of the family and friends still in Cuba. Oh, look it. So sometimes we do something that we call in Cuba conga. It's kind of like our way to, to call for attention. Calls for attention are something protester Alejandro is no stranger to. I think people are not afraid anymore to give uh, their face and their, their life to, to ask for a change. We deserve a change. Libertad, libertad. Over the last four days, protests in Denver supporting the Cuban people have grown. All the violence on the island has as well. Cubans are throwing themselves to waters every day, putting themselves in danger every day to come to this country, to escape freedom, to escape dictatorship. So it's like, what else do we need to show the world? The historic anti-government protests in Cuba were sparked by the economic crisis that's left shortages of food and medicine. NBC reports the economy is the worst in decades due to the pandemic hampering its tourism economy. But Rebecca Zuniga with the Denver Justice and Peace Committee. Yes, absolutely. Says the pandemic is just part of the issue. We the, in the U.S. are responsible for all that's happening in Cuba with our uh, embargo uh, that we should actually stop, we have created a crisis in Cuba. Not all Cuban protest supporters point the finger at the trade ban, but rather the government's control over the Cuban people over the past 60 years. <laughs> and until change is made, Alejandro's social media feed will continue to be full of calls for attention, hoping to spark change. We want freedom. We want freedom from Cuba and our people. That's all. Now, according to NBC News, the Cuban president did take some responsibility over the crisis, but they did place some blame in the United States, calling the U.S. embargo cruel and genocidal. Tom? It has always been an interesting relationship, certainly in these last 60 years, between the U.S. and Cuba. Thanks to Lisa.